Hey guys, Pastor Sean here, and I'm hoping you're having a great week so far. And I'm going to be getting into the Word of God. I'm going to dive into the Scriptures, and I'm going to be talking about something that will help us to actually see our dreams and our goals and our desires come to pass, come to fruition a lot quicker. And what do we need to do to do that? We need to follow the ways of God, and we need to focus on Him and walk by faith and not by sight. So I'm going to get into the Scriptures, and I'm going to be reading out of the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 43, and I'm going to start with verse 18. And I believe that God has a word for you today. So I'm going to go right into the book of Isaiah chapter 43, and I'm going to read verse 18. Familiar passage of scripture, but something in there I think is really important that we can apply to our everyday lives to help us to grow and to succeed in our Christian walk. Isaiah 43 verse 18 says, remember ye not the form of things, neither consider the things of old, Behold, behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth, shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. So that's a powerful passage of scripture. Isaiah 43 verse 18 says something so profound. It's so awesome. It's powerful. And if we stay in the past and we dwell on the form of things too much. What happens is our spiritual walk can take a precipitous decline. So what we need to do as believers is we need to forget the past, to put the past behind us. So a lot of people, when they hear that, you know, forgetting those things that are behind and putting those things behind me and not living in the past, and it's a great thing. It's encouraging that we shouldn't be living in the past. But a lot of people take that and analyze that and they use this in a negative light which is true. It is, you know, the negative things of the past we want to put behind us. And that's true. We want to, obviously. But also something very important, it says, remember ye not the form of things, consider not the things of old. It's talking about not only the form of things of the negative, but even the positive, your victories. What happens when we focus on our victories too much. And it's great. You get a victory. You maybe get a new job or you've been praying about something. You got an answered prayer or you, you're, you have a goal that you're trying to reach. You're trying to go to school and you're trying to achieve certain things. And, or maybe you're writing music and you're coming up with songs and you're trying to bring out the best product you can get to. And you, you reach a goal and maybe you finished a song or whatever. And Sometimes what happens is we become complacent when we remember the victories too much. When you get a victory, sometimes we just stay there and we don't go to the next level. And that can be detrimental to our spiritual walk. We don't want to just stay in the same place. We need to keep going. We need to keep going forward. God is a progressive God. And if we focus too much on our victories and we stay in the past of what we did and what we used to do and, and we kind of just stay there, we get complacent. We can't do that. The Bible says, remember not the form of things. Also, we're supposed to obviously put those sins away and, and, and put them to bed finally and lay them down. We can't carry that baggage around of guilt and condemnation and despair. God took all our sins on the cross. It says past, present, and future. Every sin that you have has been forgiven. So you, beloved, don't have to worry about the past. Those things that have happened have happened. Now you got to let them go. But the victories, you can, you can think about the victory from time to time as an example for what God did when you're going through a trial, but don't live in the past. And don't, even on the good things, you've got to get to the next victory because you know what? I've noticed when I've done things, you know what? This happened to me once. I was training and I'm a runner and I was training for a 5K and I did a 5K and I did my best 5K that I've ever done. I did a 1907 and it was fast. It was like a 610 pace with 3.1 miles and that's quick. And you know what? I just said, I said, okay, I got sub 20 and I'm good. I could have gotten sub 19 if I continued, but I felt good. I said, I kept dwelling on that victory and I just didn't do any more because I said, you know, hey, I did a 1907, but people do 18s, they do 17s, people, and I could have done it. But you know what I did is I got complacent and I just relaxed and I was just musing and just focusing on my victory. And you know what happened? I never got to the next victory. And I still, to this day, have not broke that number. And I could have very easily continued to achieve bigger and better goals. And you know what? That's what happens to us sometimes when we just focus on things and we 
Don't get to the next victory. God wants to do spectacular things in your life, things that you could never imagine. But if you hold on to these things, he can't do the new thing. God wanted to do something new. He wanted me to break a new record. Maybe he wanted me to run a, a mile and get the best mile I had. Or, or maybe he wanted me to get into some certain race or who knows, get into some running group. He had plans, but I just settled for that. And I said, that's good enough. Took a couple months off, didn't do anything else. And by the time I got back, I had already lost some of that time. Could I get it back? Maybe, but it's a lot of work to get back to that level. So what I'm trying to tell you today is don't dwell on your past too much because you've got a future. God has a future. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know the thoughts I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of hope and of a future, a beautiful, bright future. His thoughts are good for good things. He's got a hope and a future to give you an expected end. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, you have a future. He is the best for you. Don't dwell on the negative. Don't dwell on the past, even on your victories. When you get victories, thank the Lord for them, praise him for it. You know, keep it in the back of your mind as something that you can use when you're in a trial as an example for what happened when you uh, were in the storms before and you can use it as an example, but just don't live in the past. It says, remember, you're not the form of things. It doesn't just mean guilt and desp despair and sin. It means everything. It says, consider, neither consider the things of old. Don't keep considering it. It says, behold, I will do a new thing. God wants to do a new thing. He wants to give you a new victory. He wants to give you a new blessing. He wants to give you a new beginning. He wants to do something wonderful in your life. It says, I will do a new thing. Now shall it spring forth? Shall ye not know it? And I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. You may even be in the desert right now. And you may be dealing with all of these burdens and sin and guilt and, and all of the despair of the guilt that you did. You need to let go. Put the baggage down. Let go of that guilt. Let go of the past. He wants to do a new thing. He says he's going to give you rivers in the desert. That means he's going to open up a door. And so how do we do it? Here's the most important thing. It's quintessential. What is it? One, that you need to actually deal with your thoughts. The, the thoughts that you're thinking. Get rid of the stinking thinking. That's one. It's very important because what we think, it says, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. If you keep thinking about the past, keep thinking about all of these things in the past, we can't get to the future. So get rid of the stinking thinking. Two, we need to have a vision of what God's going to do in our lives. It says, without a vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. That's the book of Proverbs. We need to have a vision. Proverbs chapter 28, we need to have a vision. And so let's keep the vision alive. So have a vision of what you want to do. And in three, believe you're going to get there. And in four, get uncomfortable. Hear the Lord. When the Lord tells you to do something, get uncomfortable. And in five, prepare for the new thing. If you're into running, like I said, keep going, keep preparing. If you're into music, keep going. If you're in ministry and you're studying to be a minister of some kind, keep going. Don't stop. If you're in a, maybe you're in school and you're trying to get a trade or an education or a course, whatever it is, go for it. God has a plan for you. Don't stop here. God wants to keep moving in your life. He's got great things. He wants to do new things. Sometimes new things feel uncomfortable. A lot of people like to stay comfortable. You know, we don't want to change things around. It's so comfy and good. We don't want to add any new ministries because there's, I feel it might make me feel uncomfortable setting it up and maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. I don't know. We need to get uncomfortable. Sometimes I... I pray and then I'll put a new ministry in and sometimes it doesn't always work. But you know what? I prayed and seek the Lord and I was willing to get uncomfortable. And then sometimes ministries, we start them and God does something spectacular in our lives and he blesses it exponentially. When I started this YouTube channel, you know what? how many excuses I made at first? Oh, will anybody watch it? I don't know. I better just stay in the church and I better not give videos. And, you know, I don't know. I, I don't know how it will work out. And, you know, it's a lot of work to continue to prepare these messages. And, you know what? I don't know what people will think. What if they don't like it? You know, I had all these negative thoughts and I kept on putting it aside. And God kept saying, start your channel, start your channel, give the word out. I want my people to hear the word of God. I want you to give it. I want you to give the word of God to people on YouTube. Finally, I stepped out and did it. And you know what? Now we're starting to reap some of the benefits, all you subscribers, all you wonderful people. And if you haven't subscribed yet, by the way, I encourage you to hit subscribe below. You've been such a blessing to our to our channel and we're gonna give you the word of God. If you wanna hear the word, this is the place. We always give the word of God and I hope it encourages you, to, is, encourages you today. So um, 
what I did is I finally came on and what happened? The Lord is now blessing it, but it takes work. It takes dedication. It takes faith. And you got to put those things behind. I just want to read a quick scripture out of the book of Matthew chapter nine, verse 16 and 17. And then we'll close. It says, no man putteth a piece of new cloth unto an old garment for that which is put in to fill it up, taketh from the garment and the rent is made worse. Neither do men put new wine into old bottles, else the bottles break and the wine runneth out and the bottles perish. But they put new wine into new bottles and both are preserved. What does the scripture say? It says you don't put new cloth on an old garment because it's gonna look out of place. It's gonna look funny. It's not gonna look good. And it, you gotta put new stuff on new things because it'll stand out. It, it will just be odd. It will stick out like a sore thumb. And you don't put an old wine into new wine skins because of the elasticity of the bottles. The bottles will eventually burst and break and the wine will fall out. And it'll dump out of that bottle because of the, you can't put new wine in old wine skins. What's he saying? You can't, you, can't, you can't pour the new thing in your life until you forget the past and forget all of these things that are going on in the past and just thank the Lord for the past victories. Don't live in them. Use them as a memory and then put the negative stuff behind you. God has already forgiven you. Past, present, and future, all sins. He says he's forgiven you. He's taken all those things on the cross. His grace, his mercy, he wants to bless you. Put aside the old things, lay them down. Don't put old wine into new wine skins. Don't put the past and try to bring it to your future. If you're holding on to baggage, how's God gonna pour in the new thing in your life? You gotta let it go and say, you know what? I'm starting fresh. I'm forgetting those things that are behind and I'm pressing toward the mark for the high calling of God. And he's got a great plan for my life. God wants to bless you. Keep on serving him. Read your word and pray, and he will do great things. If this devotion blessed you today, I encourage you to hit subscribe and you know comment below. And if you um, if you want, you can uh, like this video and let others let people know about it. And I'm sure uh, they'll uh, be blessed to come on with us as well. God bless you, and thank you for watching.